It's a new month here at Hensler Financial, and we found three important things to focus on in the market this month. Number one, market breadth. The equities market, as measured by the S&P 500, is off to a hot start in 2023, up 9.64% year-to-date through May 31st. The Nasdaq performance has been even better, rising 23.6% over the same period, far better than the 18.1% and 33.2% declines the two indices experienced respectively in 2022. Digging into the contributors to the gain so far, however, paints an interesting picture that shows the breadth of the rally is quite narrow. Breadth of the market is measured by multiple indicators, but generally speaking, it suggests that if more stocks are advancing than declining, it is indicative of a stronger and more sustainable trend. If just a couple of sectors are driving all the gains, or just a handful of stocks, the rally may not have much staying power. In the past, these periods of extremely concentrated returns have preceded recessions, giving credibility to the concept of market breadth as a leading indicator of both market trend reversals and economic projections. Currently, the 10 largest stocks in the S&P 500 are responsible for nearly 90% of the index's year-to-date return. This is the highest percentage in history. Thanks a lot, AI. This rally in mega cap stocks has driven the five largest S&P 500 companies to comprise nearly a quarter of the entire index at 24.1%. For comparison, the S&P 500 equal weight index, which gives equal value to each stock, thus muting the impact that those five largest companies have on overall performance, has actually fallen 0.67%, far below the index return of 9.64%. Whether or not this time it's different holds true remains to be seen, but for now, it's good to be one of the five largest stocks in the S&P 500. Number two, hike, pause, skip. Fed funds futures continue to signal that even the market doesn't know what the Fed might do next. Just short of a month ago, Fed funds futures indicated a roughly 70% chance that the Fed would hike its benchmark interest rate another 25 basis points to a range of 5.25% to 5.5% at its upcoming June policy meeting. Today, however, the odds of a June hike stand at just over 19% at the time of this writing. This change in expectations was a result of several Fed officials making dovish statements about future near-term hikes, and the conversation now has shifted to one centered around the words pause and skip. Some believe that future rate hikes are now off the table, while others argue that this is simply a one-month skip, and rates could go higher starting with the Fed's July meeting. Fed Governor Philip Jefferson said last week that, quote, a decision to hold our policy rate constant at a coming meeting should not be interpreted to mean that we have reached the peak rate for this cycle, and that, quote, indeed skipping a rate hike at a coming meeting would allow the committee to see more data before making decisions about the extent of additional policy firming. Once again, the Fed seems to be data dependent, but with a blowout jobs report just a week ago, we'll be watching to see if it could provide the needed cover for rates to go higher. Number three, China's recovery sputters. Perhaps first quarter earnings would be buoyed by strong results in China as the country continued to recover following long-standing lockdowns resulting from COVID-19. Early on, economic data supported this notion, for the most part, as Chinese consumers showed exceptional strength with retail sales improving steadily over the last five months, as did consumer confidence. The past few weeks have seen the tide start to change, though, and Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index briefly slipped into bear market territory following several worse-than-expected economic releases. Now, China's Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index, which is a key indicator for factory output, contracted for a second consecutive month. Furthermore, the country is facing a new COVID-19 variant that threatens the reopening. The conversations now have shifted to the potential reality that China could drive less global growth this year and beyond than many business leaders expected, which could weigh on earnings results and lead investors to question whether or not they're willing to pay the current premium on the market. And that's been your Market Minute for the month of June. Thanks for listening.